Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to another round of the Tuesday Morning Uke Club. I'd like to do a shake and just remember that, you know, playing the uke when you're new and you're playing, your fingertips will get sore. So if your fingertips get sore, just take a break, take a break. But it's important that both hands have lots of flexibility. You never want to feel that your hand is locked to your wrist, right? You want to keep flexibility. And for that reason is that, you know, the power and, and quality of sound in your strum is dependent on some rotation happening through the wrist. When you strum, you want to be flexible. You want to be able to see your hand on the follow through. All right. So if you're locked together, all, everything's coming from the forearm and there's no, there's no beauty in that sound. Right? And the left hand, don't forget, we're trying to run our thumb down the invisible line going down the back of the neck. And by having our thumb here and a loose wrist, it gives us a good hinge to ensure that we get a downward pressure on the strings. All right. And it allows us the ability to have a little bit of ability to pivot. So sometimes, for example, the G7 chord, we like to be able to move our hand just a little bit towards the headstock to allow that third finger to get into the second fret of the first string. It just means that you can avoid all the thuds and buzzes. All right, so just keep your, keep your, keep your hands flexible for, for best tone. All right, I think we're gonna do a little chord review, all right? And remember, as we're starting the uke, there are four chords which are the most critical. And if you only have a couple minutes to play the uke every day, refresh those four chords. Remember the C chord that we did? Third finger, third fret of the first string. All right, and let's... And for our strum, let's just take our, our thumb, we're just gonna run it down across the, across the strings. Remember, for good tone, we wanna think about the strings as being waves on the ocean, our thumb, or our pick, or our other fingers, being a boat that's riding over the waves, not crashing through the waves, all right? Have even pressure across all the strings. All right, and here we go. So that's, that's a really nice C chord, okay? Then, our A minor chord, another one finger chord. We'll take our middle finger, and we're gonna press at the second fret of the fourth string, the fourth string being the string closest to your chin. That sure makes a lot of sense. But the fourth string, string closest to our chin, Second finger at the second fret, and again, let's get a good sound. Then make the F chord. When you're making the A minor chord, all we have to do to make F, we're gonna drop our first finger at the first fret of the second string. So it's gonna look like this. All right, here's how, here's how the F chord looks. There we go. And then we switch over to the G seventh chord Nice thing about this going to G7 is that we keep our first finger in place and we take our second and third fingers, and just move them. We can pivot our hand a little bit and drop our second and third fingers down at the second fret of the third string and the second fret of the first string, respectively. And there's G7, all right? So let's do this chord progression. So when you play a sequence or a group of chords sequentially, that's called a chord progression. So here's a, here's a simple chord progression. It's C, A minor, F, G7, and then back to C, all right? And so many songs are, are for the ukulele are written in the key of C. If you master these four chords, you'll be able to play so many of the songs for the uke. And so if you only have a minute or two to touch the uke in a day, go through that. It's almost like playing a song. It's a really pleasing progression, all right? So focus on making the best sound you can make, all right? Never sort of pick up and get a bad sound. You focus on getting a good sound. Avoid the thuds and buzzes. If you happen to get a thud or a buzz, like let's say, let's make one. Um, Oh, there's a thud, 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 thud coming from the first string where we're trying to play the G7 chord. Oh, so what you want to do is un try to unravel where that thud's coming from. So let's start with the fourth string, press it. That one sounds all right. Let's go to the third string. That sounds all right. Okay, all right. And let's try the, the second string. Oh, G7, that sounded okay too. Let's try the first string. Oh. Oh, we got a thud happening and a buzz, a thud and a buzz happening. So let's evaluate what's going on. 
And if it's buzzing, you're probably not pressing down hard enough, all right? If it's thudding, you're definitely not pressing. So keep pressing, pressing. A buzz often will be that you're just not quite pressing enough. And here we go. So I'm pressing down enough. And remember, in our first lesson, we, th we talked about pressing the strings until you can feel, feel the string contact the fret wire. Remember the frets, the wires going across, across your fretboard? Press the string and feel when it's making contact with the fret wire. Okay? I don't know, you should be able to feel that. All right. In fact, if you're pressing, your you should the string should make a little little tone when you're pressing like that. And so what you want to be doing is you want to press just hard enough to make good contact with the fret wire, but not too much. Because if you press too hard, you'd actually push that string out of tune. Hey, put a big ridge on the end of your fingers. It hurts. So don't don't cause your fingers to hurt unnecessarily. And just get learn what your uke is expecting in terms of pressure on strings okay okay now um, we're going to do I wonder if I should do this well I guess I'll bring up uh, our chord chart the chord chart was pretty useful and I'll bring the chord so we have it all visible for us and we'll go through uh, I think what we're going to do is we'll go through what, what I call the cycle of fifths for our major chords we'll do our cycle of fifths for our minor chords and for our seventh chords there'll be C G D, A, E, B, 6, 6 times 4, 24. Wow, we already know 24 chords, people, all right? Well, you've already seen 24 chords, but you know what you want to do is if those 24, first 24 chords, if you are in a position where if I sort of do flashcards and name the chord and you got to play it, if that can come pretty read, readily to you, all, nearly all of the uke repertoire is available to you. Right, you sort of like you've learned pretty much all the chords you need to know. There are other specialty chords and other voicings of chords, right, that will, can help you along. But really, sort of then you know those chords and you get one of the the fake books or what was the the the, the, uh, the our daily ukulele. You get one of those or go to ukulele dot dot com and look at their song archive. Then you can play anything that's up there. Okay. All right. Let me pull the the. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Okay, so, so we're going to, let's start with our major chords, all right? So we're going to start, and I'm going to get my spotlight, and we're going to start with C. We already played the C chord today, all right? Focus on a good sounding chord, third finger at the first fret, at the third fret of the first string. There we go, all right? Now, the next one, we call, we're going to do something we call the cycle of fifths, all right? So the way notes are ordered on the piano keyboard, if you had access to a piano keyboard, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, all right? And they're arranged in order in terms of low to high on the keyboard. And so if we start C and we count five up, well, that takes us to G, all right? So let's go, the next chord we're gonna play is G. And you guys, we've played the G seventh chord but I think what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to play the real G, the real G chord, not the G seventh chord, because we'll do that in a bit, but let's do the real G chord. So what we're playing here, first finger at the second fret of the third string, second finger at the second fret of the first string, and third finger at the third fret of the second string. And that's what that chord should sound like. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Now let's go up another fifth. So from G, one, two, three, four, five. Well, the next, so if we count five, the next chord we're gonna play is a D. And remember, we had a couple of voicings on this one. And this is not a bad voice. And we're just gonna take our first finger, all right? And we're gonna make a little bar. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use our bar and we're gonna press down on the second fret those three the, at, the, at the second fret of the second, third, and fourth strings. And we're simply not going to play the first string, the E string. So we're just going to play three, three notes. That's the easiest one. And if you have your thumb opposite your first finger, so if you're making the bar, have your thumb opposite your first finger so that your thumb is helping you to provide downforce. So you can take your, if necessary, your, your second finger and lay it down on top 
of your first one. Anything you need to do to get a little bit more downforce so that you're applying even, not heavy, but just enough even pressure across the second, third, and fourth strings. And you should get a tone that sounds like that. Okay, there we go. Cool. Now, the next chord we're going to do is A. All right, it's a two finger chord. And first finger goes at the first fret of the third string. And your second finger goes at the second fret of the fourth string, the string closest to your chin. And your first and second strings are open. Okay. Cool. And then the next, the next one we're going to do is E. All right. And E is if we played a D before, we're going to play E simply by moving. We play D by pressing down at the second fret. We're going to play E by pressing down at the fourth fret. Same situation, just the second, third, and fourth strings. There's E right there. Okay, and don't don't play the first string. Just play the first three. Okay. And the next chord we're going to play. How many have we done? We've done C. C, G, D, A, and E. Oh, that, that's good enough for now. We're not going to use the B major chord. So let, let's stop for there, okay? Now we're going to play some minor chords, all right? So we've done some major chords. Now let's play a few minor chords. Our C minor chord is, and I'm going to make my screen a little bit shorter here. Here we go. We're going to press down. Instead of like the D chord we're pressing at the second fret of the second, third, and fourth strings, now we're going to press down at the third fret, at the, the third fret of the first, second, and third strings. Similar technique as to how we played with D. All right, our thumb opposite our first finger, and you can use your second finger to help press down. And in this case, you can play all four strings. Just pressing down at the third at the third fret. All right. We also learned a technique where if you take your third finger, if you can stretch it, if you press to take your third finger and press down at the fifth fret of the fourth string, there's another voicing that's often used for C minor. That's a really nice voice. All right. But you don't have to do that. It's optional. You can just play C minor just like this, and it sounds just great. Okay. G minor. G minor's not even on this chart. Good grief. Good grief. I guess what I'm gonna do, I'll show it to you. Here's a here's a here's a new chord. And it's not the hardest chord in the world. It's it's a it's a sweet little chord. Take your first finger, and we're gonna press down at the first fret of the first string. Your second finger is gonna press down at the second fret of the third string. And then your third finger is gonna press down at the third fret of the second string. And you may think this kind of looks similar to, to the, the G major chord, but it's not that similar. Because if you were gonna actually move your first finger to the second fret, um, that's not how we would play G. We play G like that. So anyhow, let's try this again. So first finger at the first fret of the first string and second finger at the second fret of the third string, third finger at the third fret of the second string, and that's G minor. All right. Next chord we'll play is D minor. And we've played this one before. We'll want you guys to start learning this one because we're going to play next week. I think we'll play Tonight You Belong to Me, and it requires a D minor chord. So D minor, the open, the first string is open. The second, your first finger is going to be at the first fret of the second string. Your second finger is going to be at the second fret of the fourth string. And you're going to tuck in your third finger at the second fret of the third string. So once again, this is where sometimes if you have the ability, if you, know, you have the flexibility, just shift your hand up a little bit towards the headstock. You can drop, it makes it easier to drop your fingers in like that. And there's D minor. Cool, all right. And then we have A minor. Thank goodness, another single note chord. One of our first chords, all right. And then E minor, remember we did E minor? 
Here it is right here where it's a cool chord where it looks like your fingers are in a line. Your first finger is going to be at the second fret of the first string, second finger at the third fret of the second string, and your third finger at the fourth fret of the third string. Here we go. All right. There we go. Now let's go and play some seventh chords. Are you guys shocked? Just a few weeks ago, you guys didn't know any chords. Well, Sarah did, and Melanie did. She, Melanie knew some chords. But now, you sort of, are, you, are you getting stunned and amazed at, wow, you know, I may not have all these chords directly underneath my fingertips, but you know what, if I had to play them, now I've, I know I've seen them before, and I know how to, I know, at least know how to finger them, and I can start getting good at them. All right, here we go. So, um, muscle memory is important. Um, to play songs, it's really important to, to have some recollection that, you know, if I need to play a C7, you need to have the muscle memory of having played that chord so that you can move to it, okay? All right, C7, first finger, first fret of the first string. There you go. It's a beauty. G7, one of our first chords. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, and I'm not a fan of this D7th. This is D7th. All right. So the, the way you'd play this one is check out the D major chord up here. See how, see the commonality. You're going to be pressing with your first finger at the second fret of the second, third, and fourth strings. And then taking your middle finger and pressing at the third fret of the first string like that. All right. Beware of thuds and buzzes on this one. But you know what? It, they don't have this chord here, but I really, I really like this D7, which is more open strings. And let's remind ourselves on that. Don't do anything with your first finger. Your second finger goes at the second fret of the fourth string. And your third finger goes at the second fret of the second string, leaving the first and third strings open. And there you go. And in my mind, there, there are different voicings of the chord, but I like that one. It's just a little bit more mid-rangey and it's more susceptible. It's more ability to do um, suspensions and cool little tones by moving your fingers around instead of locking into this one. Okay. All right, D7, A7th. And we've learned a uh, different voicing for this A7th chord. We've learned the single, single finger version, which is simply your first finger at the first fret of the third string. All right. However, this, this voicing has your third finger at the third fret of the second string, and that works well too. All right. So let's talk a little bit about voicings. Voicings are simply a different ordering or stacking of the notes that compose, comprise up a, a chord. And you can take a chord like C major, which is, you know, essentially it's um, G, C, E, and another C at the top. All right, that's how they vo voice this particular one. But you can play a C like this, and it's just different order of the notes. And different order of the notes just gives you a different tone. And depending on the song you're singing or, or the you know, song you're playing, being able to have a different voicing of that chord might mesh better with a vocal all right, or another instrument. For example, okay, and so it's um as you as you move along, having a few other options in terms of voicings to play your chords would be is a is a cool thing, okay. Okay, I'm going to remove the the chord chart. Here we go. Any any comments? Is it, you know we spent a little bit of time on that one. We spent quite a bit of time, but it's useful, right? So the idea of it's a cycle this cycle of fifths. You start with the first one. Go up five, go up five, go up five, and eventually you serve. Eventually, if you keep going the whole cycle of fifths, you'll come back around to, to where you started. Um, but it's amazing we have, you know, there's there's 15, you know, 15, 15 chords there right now. Okay, so all right, now we're going to do um, let's see, let's do our some right hand skills. All right, so um, we've done so much in our chords. Last week we did some note skills. And I don't know if we'll get to that any more of those note skills today. I'd like to sort of do merrily we roll along again, uh, just to kind of keep it fresh. But let's let's talk about what we're doing here. A lot of our strumming so far has been thumb, okay. And a lot of people 
could play their entire lives just doing thumb strums, all right? And nice thing about the thumb strum is that it's really mellow, all right? So using the meaty part of your thumb and, and strumming right here at the base of, base of the fretboard, that is the most mellow sound your uke is ever going to give you, all right? And for a lot of folks, it's just, it's easy and it's sort of like low stress and it, it sounds beautiful. But if you want to serve, like play, play some some other cool things, there's more strums that we can do, right? So let's review our. Let's first of all let's review our other strums. So we've done the thumb strum. Now we're going to do our brush strum. So this is the beetle strum where <laughs> there's a, a bug that's landed on your strings, and you want to get them off, take off murder hornet. Right? And uh, there we go, and it's on the beach, and then not bugging, not bugging your strings anymore. But you, we're just going to do a brush where we're going to take all of our fingers and brush. And to do this properly, you can't have any tension. There's a lot of rotational, there's rotation going through your wrist to play this. So we're going to come across, and you should see the top of your hand on the follow through of this strum. All right, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But not really, all right? To do beautiful strumming, you must follow through. Must follow through, all right? You only have four strings. Let's make sure that every string gets its opportunity to play, all right? And so by hitting every string when you're strumming, you get the most volume and the best tone of your instrument. So the brush strum, another angle. We're just gonna take all our four fingers and we're gonna brush, brush with your fingernails, okay? And the strum is one, two, three, four. It's more of a, it's a quarter note strum. All right. Okay. There's that one. Then we're going to do our just do down strokes with our finger. Okay. Your index finger gives you two different tones. Your fingernail is going to give you a brighter tone because it's kind of like hard, like you know, a, a flat pick. And then the other side of your finger is just well, it's just your finger, and it's going to be more mellow, like your thumb stroke, right? But what you want to be doing, let's just do down stroke with your finger and we want brush perpendicular to the neck so we want we don't want to be going across like this or down like this we want to hold our instrument so that our strum, our finger, our down stroke is going straight straight across straight across so one, two, three, just one our finger and sometimes it's hard if you're watching someone strum, you think, what are they doing? Are they, you know, in this case, I'm only contacting the strings on the down stroke. Down stroke. Moving my hand up, again, getting ready for the next down stroke. Moving my hand up, getting ready for the next down stroke. Contact on down stroke. Down, down, down. You can get faster. You can go pretty fast with just one down. Now, what about upstrokes? All right, so upstroke, all the same idea. So you want to start at your first string and come up towards your chin. You want to make nice, good contact, even contact across all your strings. There is follow through, right? But don't poke yourself in the eye or anything like that, okay? Upstrokes, one, two, three. So I'm upstroke, moving my hand down, getting ready for the next upstroke. Moving my hand down, getting ready for the next upstroke. And I'm using the fleshy part of my first finger. Okay, so now let's do a little more sophisticated strum where we're going to do down and up, down, up. You're making contact on the down stroke and the up stroke. Down, up, down, up. Make sure all the strings are being contacted. Notice that one down stroke is a little brighter, up stroke's a little darker. Yin, 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 yin. <laughs> Let's go one and two, go a little faster. All right, cool, all right, good. All right, so um, I should show you a little um, notation that uh, ukulele methods and guitar methods actually use for documenting different, different strums. You've seen from the Uke Society um, arrangements, with all, a uke arrangement will always have a little strum guide. So what strum are we using here? We're we using the island strum, we're we using just a quarter note strum, and there'll be a little guidance with like, they'll have down and up arrows. In fact, 
Let me bring one up here so you can see an example. Um, a cloud drive. And um, let's see, which one? Oh, I could do. So here's, here's an example. And here they're doing, for example, a version of the island scrum. And so what they've got here is the beats. There, this is in four four times, so there are four beats in every measure of the of the song. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. I hear the train rolling. It's rolling round the bend. Okay, so one, two, three, four. It's rolling round the bend. And and every one of those claps, every one of those beats, you can divide into two. All right, so there's one and two and three and four and. So the number is which beat you're on, whether you're first, second, third, or fourth beat, and the and is always on the second half of the beat. So it would be one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. It's rolling round the bend. One and two and three and four. And the strum pattern shows you whether you're doing a downstroke or an upstroke and where on the beat you are. So for example, in this particular island strum, there's a downstroke on one, there's a downstroke on two, and an upstroke on the and of two. And then there's a bit of syncopation. There'll be an upstroke on the and of three, and a downstroke on four, and and an upstroke on the and of four. So it'll go like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... <laughs> the islands are sometimes counting these. You have to go slow. So one and two and three and four and two and three and four and... Okay. Sometimes the strums can be easier easier to feel than they are to count, all right? It's useful to try to count them, all right? Because then you really understand where they're at. But in most songs, you'll probably find yourself using a combination of strums. You may not use an island strum for the entire piece, okay? But for example, if you're saying, I hear the train rolling, it's coming around the bend. And sometimes it takes a little while to sort of feel it. Okay, because I usually sing that one for more. I hear the train rolling, it's coming around the bend. I use like a, a modified sort of just all downstrokes, like a strong and a light downstroke, or I'll do, or I'll do an eighth note, one and two. And I'll hear the train rolling, it's coming around the bend. And, but if you do going to do that with an island strum, sometimes you're, it takes it's easier to feel it. So I hear the train rolling, okay. and I'm gonna mess it up. I hear the train rolling, it's coming around the bend. I ain't seen sunshine since I don't know when. And I'm gonna mess it up. But it's like if you really want to play the island strum with it, you'll have to practice it a little bit because it's some of these strums you, you should feel it. But let's do a few strums that um, will lead, get us to the point of playing the island strum, right? So we've done the quarter note strum where we're just doing one, two, three, four. I hear the train rolling, it's coming round the bend. I ain't seen sunshine since I don't know when. Okay, then just a quarter note strum, you can use your thumb, you can do the brush, you can just do a downstroke with your, with your finger, all right? Now let's try a different one where eighth note. So we're going to play, we're going to have a strum on the one on the beat and the and of the beat. It's called an eighth note strum. And in eighth notes, there are two eighth notes in every quarter, quarter note. So every quarter note is one beat. All right. So quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. We call it a quarter note because there are four of those quarter notes in one bar or one measure of a song that's in 4-4 four, four time, okay? Most popular music is in 4-4 four, four time. 
but you could have songs that are in 3-4 or 6-8, all right? Anything that's a waltz time that you dance a waltz beat to is in 3-4 time, so 1-2-3-2-2-3-3-2-3-4. Two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, but if it's in, if you're, know, for example, 4-4 four, four time, there are four beats, and we call each one a quarter note. And if we have eighth notes where each quarter note can be divided into two eighth notes. Right, so one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So we now have two notes being played in the unit of time that you give to a quarter note. Okay? And what we'll do here is you can either play those just as downstrokes, but there's a limitation because eventually you're sort of you're moving your hands, your right hand really fast, right? And it can be more comfortable to play up up and down, right? So let's just start just doing downstrokes. So one and two and three and four. We're just doing downstrokes. So we're doing it down, move your hand up, get ready for the next downstroke. So your hand's moving pretty fast. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and Now, since you've already been moving your hand all that distance, you might as well, you know, might as well put the upstroke to use. Okay, so now we did a downstroke with our with our finger, the nail part of our finger. Now we're going to do an upstroke with our fleshy part of our first finger. So we're going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. We're going to speed up. part of your practice should be you know it's it's fine to just hang out on one chord and you don't even don't even need to play anything you can just use you can just be practicing your chord shapes or your strumming patterns to the my dog has fleece chord to the A minor seven all right you don't even need to use your left hand because uh, you know it's a beautiful sound all by itself right so now let's try a different Let's try a different, um, well, actually, let's do another chord pattern, uh, strumming pattern. Let's do maybe one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. So we're going to do a quarter note, strum a quarter note, and then beats two, three, and four are going to be the eighth note strum. So it's going to go one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and and look how much I'm, I'm following through. There's none of this sort of, I'm not sort of like, you know, tight, you know, no sort of tight, you know, not getting across all the strings. To get a really good strum, you want to fall through. So, okay, so one, two, and three, and four, and one. Two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, now let's make it a little more complex, and let's do our favorite chord progression in the left hand. C, A minor, F, G7, C again, all right? So we're just, let's start just with a quarter note strum. One, two, three, four. A minor, A minor. Get ready for F, F, two, th get ready for G7. Ready for A minor. Good, good. G7. All right, now let's do our eighth note strums. We'll do four beats of eighth notes, right? So one and two and three and four and A minor. F, G7. So you can pick up the speed, you can add different chords. But the idea for your basic chords, you should be you know, moving, moving between them cleanly. One way to think about your right hand is that your right hand 
you, when you, you're for your favorite strums, you should think of your strumming hand as being a machine. You should be machine-like so that you're really not focused on, am I hitting the strings? What am I doing? You should feel the machine is, once you start that machine, it's going, all right? And then, with that machine is running, then your left hand or your voice can be focused on telling the story that you want to tell, all right? And so your left hand is, what its job is to do is feed the right hand machine, keep it fed, feed in it in the right hand machine, chord machine, or string machine, it wants to be fed with chords and notes. All right, so your left hand is gonna to have to be confident enough to move to the chord that your, that your strumming hand wants. Because if, if, you, if you ham hand your chords, then it, the machine's still going, but it's not playing anything. It's just playing, it's play, it's playing a rhythm. Maybe you want to do that. All right. And if you listen carefully to what you're playing, going from C to A minor to F to G, you'll notice that you have some latitude in terms of moving between the chords and it's still pleasing to sound like here I'm, I'm moving from C to A minor and actually as I was moving to A minor on that upstroke I actually wasn't touching the strings at all until I, and I only touched the played the A minor as my hands and fingers coming down and it works because the, the, it's an A minor with the strings all, all un, unfretted okay and then going from F to G7, that F is an important part of the G7 chord. So you have, it gives you a little bit of time to get in position, right? And you'll find in a lot of songs, you'll have a little bit of lad to. You don't have to be super crisp in terms of having to move from chord to chord to time. Sometimes you will. Sometimes you will, right? But in this case, this, this easy progression gives you a little bit of latitude, gives you a little, it's a little bit softer for you, right? Okay, we're at 11.55, and we didn't cover notes, we didn't cover strumming, our, our, like our, our riffs, we'll have to come back to that, but I guess we better play a song, or maybe two songs, I think we have time for two songs. I was always thinking we'd do uh, Jambalaya, we, we'd go back to one of the first songs that we, that we learned, and you guys will be amazing. The first time you played the song, it was, it was like tough. And now we play it, and you'll probably be surprised at how straightforward it is, right? So let's, let me bring up the, um, the, the chart for Jambalaya. I hope I have it. Here it is, right here. All right, and here we go. We'll take the, we'll take the, the first two verses and the chorus. And regard, remember, we only have, need two chords, C and G7. And here is the strumming pattern. They're trying to do like a, an island strum here. But I think we'll do a, an eighth note strum. We'll do one and two and three and four. So let's use our fingers. First finger, we're going to do down up to do this, uh, this eighth note strum. And I think we'll start with the, the chorus first. So chorus. Then we'll do the first verse, chorus, second verse, chorus, and then we'll be done, all right? So here we go. Jambalaya and a crawfish pie and a filet gumbo, G7. Cause tonight I'm gonna see my share of me own. Back to C. Pick guitar, fill fruit jar, and be gay Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Goodbye, Joe, me gotta go, me oh my oh. Me gotta go, both broke down the bio. I'm dropping my youth. My Yvonne, the sweetest one, me oh my oh. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Jambalaya and a crawfish pie. Follow through on your course. Cause tonight I'm gonna see my share of me. 
Where's the thumb of your left hand? Is it running down the back of the neck? All right. Pick guitar, fill fruit jar, and be gayo. Son of a gun, we'll have fun on the bio. Tibido, fun to know this place is buzzing. Can folk come to see Yvonne by the dozen? Dress in style, go hog wild, me oh my oh. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. Jambalaya and the crawfish pine to feel a gumbo. Cause tonight I'm gonna see my share of me Pick guitar, fill fruit jar, and be gay Son of a gun, we'll have big fun. Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio. And there we go. All right. Cool. Here we go. We're back. Okay. We have time to do another song. Let's do another one. How about, um, let's see. Um, oh, let's, let's do the, last week we played Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. Let's do Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash this time. I think I've got Folsom up here. Here we go. And next time when we review our um, opening, which goes. All right. But we're going to do, this is um, not to make chords, C, C7 that we played this morning, F, and G. All right. Now, in this one, if it's more comfortable to play G7 instead of the G, you can play the G7. But, you know, in this case, why don't you just play the G? Play the G. It's good practice, and since uh, no one can hear you um, muffle it, let's just work on getting mastery of that chord, because sometimes you really want to hear the G instead of the G7. Okay? Okay. So we're going to start, and we're going to do... Um, we're just going to do, I'm going to change my strumming patterns. I'm going to start off with just a quarter note strum, all right? And I will probably pick up, do an eighth note strum. So try to follow me as I change my strumming patterns. And I may do some other strum strumming patterns and just try to listen to what the rhythm is and see if you can follow, follow where we're going, all right? All right, so I hear the train rolling. It's rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. There's C7 and now F. And I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. And time keeps dragging on. There's C. Getting ready for G. But the train keeps on rolling down to San Antonio. Eighth note strum. When I was just a baby. My mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man named Reno just to watch him die. Now I hear that whistle blowing. I hold my head and cry. I hear the train roll. the cool things about playing the uke with other people is that you don't have to be playing exact precisely the same strumming pattern so here you can have someone who's kind of like playing more rhythmically sort of like simulating the train rolling down the tracks and if what you've got just play the chord as your as the chord changes okay nothing wrong with that you're still adding to the song you're still enjoying the song you're just doing a quarter note strum 
and as long as people are in time, if you're playing quarter note strum, be in time with the beat of the music. If you're going to play a single note, a single uh, chord as the chord changes, make sure you're there, all right? And you can have any number of people playing the uke, and it all sound like like you know a group of ukes making music, right? So, um, so you know when you get together and play with other people, no uke needs to be left behind, right? Play what you can, right? And sort of add add, add your voice. Right? Okay, thanks for another round of the Tuesday morning uke club. And I'm gonna I'm going to un unmute everybody so we can chat.